Hello, I'm Nazir Afsal. I was Chief Crown Prosecutor and Chief Executive of the country's Police and Crime Commissioners. Following the CEDAW Public Tribunal, I want to share a few thoughts, if I may. What the Tribunal has clearly demonstrated is that women's voices and women not being listened to or women not being seen is something that has damaged the ability for women, women to be able to exert their rights. The concept of gender neutrality serves to entrench and reinforce male privilege. And I say that as a man who's worked to tackle violence against women and girls for the best part of two decades. It's frightening what women have to experience on a daily basis, whether it's from the 97% who say they were sexually harassed to the two that are killed every week, to the tens of thousands that suffer domestic abuse and violence against women and girls pretty much every day. And people say to me, if you have a bit of rights for women, for women, you are creating a hierarchy of rights. What they seem to forget is that women are not a minority. They're the majority in this country. And the fact that women don't have access to the same rights as men is something we should be ashamed of. There are gaps in the Human Rights Act. There are gaps in the Equality Act. I know, as a national advisor to the Welsh Government, that the Welsh Government is committed to the incorporation of CEDAW into Welsh law. I know that Scotland has similar ambitions. We also know that it is challenging to do so without the UK Government committing to doing so. You may have, and we may have, gender pay gap legislation. We may have uh, all manner of... Um, means by which we can identify why it is that women are being discriminated against. But we don't do enough to tackle that. And unless we have, an, in effect, a Women's Bill of Rights, we will never make the difference that we intend to. I saw as a prosecutor, and I still see as a justice professional, how resources have sadly impacted on the way that violence against women and girls has been dealt with. Uh, we were making significant progress in the early part of the first two or three years of the last decade. And then we've slipped from 2015, when we had the highest conviction rate for violence against women and girls in our history, to 2021, where we had the lowest. How did that happen? It's because we took our eye off the ball. Victims weren't being listened to anymore. The officers weren't there. We lost half a million years of police experience. We lost thousands of prosecutors and justice professionals. The courts closed, police stations closed. It meant that victims were not getting anything like the service they deserved and continued to not get the service they deserve. Why would they stay and support a prosecution if the trial could be three or four years away? That's just one example of why it's important to incorporate CEDAW into UK law. Because it will mean that everybody prioritises women's rights. We can't carry on allowing male privilege, misogyny, patriarchy to dominate our thinking. We can't have a situation where a girl can't complete her education, where she may be forced into marriage, where she may suffer honour-based abuse, where she may even not be born because of feticide, because families want a boy. They see a boy as a blessing and a girl as a burden. There are potentially, or even more than 50 shades of violence against women and girls. The pensions gap, the equality gap, the pay gap, the inequality in health gap, you name it. These can only be resolved if we prioritise women's rights as CEDAW enables us to do that. The business case speaks for itself. The legal and emotional and moral case speaks for itself. And I work, and I will continue to work, with the CEDAW Public Tribunal and anybody that believes in women's rights to ensure that CEDAW and the underlying aims of CEDAW are enshrined in our law.